to you all the viewers um, today we are here to meet an important personality and to have an exclusive interview with this important guest of ours he is by name um, Colonel retired Anthony uh, Adebayo Ojoma um, he's here today to share with us a personal experience which we could say that has accumulated over time and um, we will be glad that he's here with us to share with us this important information. He's here to speak with us on an important topic, how he personally discovered the one and only true God. There is more or less like self-discovery and we would like to uh, have a series of questions uh, with him in so that we'll be able to explore deeper into this discovery of his. Sir, you are welcome, sir. Well, thank God. Uh, before we go into the actual topic that you uh, wanted to share with us, that is how you personally discover this one and only true God, we'd like to know you a little bit more. And I would like to take it from your family background. Mm -hmm. um, because we would like to have it, if we can have your biography, uh, down the drain so that we we'll get the audience get to know you better. So, could you please kindly explain to us your family background? Mm. Oh God! In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, you alone we praise. The gracious God. The owner of the day of the old universe, the owner of the old universe, most, grief, most gracious, most merciful, the owner of the day of judgment, you alone we worship, and to you alone we ask for help. Show us the great, the straight path, the path of those whom you favor, not the path of those who earn your wrath or those who go astray. Merciful God, glory be to you. Thine are we, O Lord, and to thee alone in gratitude we dedicate our lives. Accept this, our volition in thy grace, and grant us the help of thy power. O God, to you is the return of everybody. We do request from thee to please load help with good deeds, so that we too will share out of that paradise when we are ready to answer thy call. Amen. Now, to my question. To your question. Before I answer that question, let me first of all clear certain ground. I am here not to propagate any religion or to be used as any religious instrument. I'm here to share my experience with the public so that they can learn from this and they can find the true path leading to Almighty. Otherwise, I'm a simple, humble seeker, seeking the countenance of God. On that note, my family background happened to be a prince. The seat, or rather the king, the kingship of that princehood is called Ojomo. Ojomo is a worshipper of Ogun. Ogun is the god of iron. So that's the primary mode of worship Ojomo adopts. At a particular stage, the Westerners came to Nigeria from the south and eventually they found their way to Owo. Owo is my village, a big village in Undo state of Nigeria. So they met Ojomo. In, they introduced their mission, and Ojomo called all the sisters and introduced them to 
these visitors. So there are some of the people registered there and they became Christians. So in the palace, in Ojomo's palace, you have Christians and Muslims. But the primary mode of worship there is Ogun, the god of fire. As time went on, the Arabs too came from the north. Just like what happened when the, the Christians came, Ojomo also called the century, introduced these people to them, and some of them too were registered as, as Muslims. So in Ojomo's palace, you have both Muslims, Christians, but the primary mode of worship, as I said, is Ogun, worshiping of Ogun, Ogun, I mean, God of iron. Right? Okay, that is the mode. That is the type. But I belong to the lineage of those who were initially registered as Christians. So as Christians, we had four gods. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, plus God of Ogun, the God of Iron. So that is the type of whom I was born into. Thank you very much. Um, from there, also an important aspect of your life, which I believe um, uh, has really contributed to your makeup today, mm -hmm. is your educational uh, career. Um, will you be glad to also share with us your educational background? Yeah. I started my infantry and primary educations at Lagos uh, Government School, Lagos at Ibute Lefum. From there, I proceeded to uh, Muslim High School in Shagamu, where I had part of my education, secondary education. So, and finished my secondary education at Owo, my village, at Imade College. After that, I was employed by Ministry of Health because initially I wanted to read medicine. So, Ministry of Health sent me to pathology department. And pathology department in turn seconded me to uh, Federal School of Science and Technology at Unicorn then. Okay, in other words, I was reading and uh, working at the same time. But as time went on, I couldn't cope. So I have to resign from job, from, from job and face the uh, study squarely. Yes. And that, now that took me to uh, Ibadan Grammar School, where I had my HSC. Until 1967, when I now took an entrance examination to Nigerian Defense Academy. So I was admitted to a Defense Academy in 1967. In uh, 1970, I was then commissioned as second lieutenant to Nigerian Army. That's all. All the others, as I said, they are courses, courses to Amadou Bello University to read engineering, courses to Pakistan for advanced engineering course, uh, courses to India for technical sca staff course, uh, courses to Jaji um, um, staff course, and the battalion commander's course, Jaji. Briefly, that is uh, my educational career. Thank you very much. Um, I, I want us to move close now to the topic that uh, brought us together, and that's the discovery of this one and only true God. And I want us to take it right from the infancy stage. Um, you explained earlier on that um, when the, 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 the main or the major religion of focus or point of focus is Ogun for this Ojomo family. Mm -hmm. But there and then you have Muslims, you have Christians within the same household and also even practicing this uh, Ogun uh, traditional religion. Um, as, as, as a young boy coming up, how was your own experience and how did you plow through? Uh, yeah, you are inclined towards Christianity, uh, but what, what were your quest, so to say? And how did you go about moving through that line 
down to we may say what actually landed you to what where you are today. Okay. Yes. Okay. I told you. Yes. The type of home I was born into. We were Christians as well as idol worshippers. Yeah. And that was the way I was involved in that practice. Until later on, my father had to go abroad on a course. So I was the smallest in the family. So he then took me to a friend of his, a guardian, um, Mr. Etty Williams, um, who happened to be a deacon in Baptist church. So then I was transferred to Mr. Etty Williams' house. Being in a, uh, I mean, in a Christian home, a purely Christian home, and a deacon for that matter, so matter of, uh, I, I, I dare not even mention the worship of Ogun before right, him. Yes. So eventually, the idea of uh, Ogun worshiping started disappearing away from me. Then I became a full-fledged uh, Christian. In fact, I was even baptized in the Baptist church soaked in water. Okay, and that was me. Okay, and I was with Mr. Uh, uh, Eddie Williams throughout my primary uh, years. Okay. Then when I left Mr. T. Williams uh, place, after my primary education, I was admitted to uh, um, um, Muslim high school in Shagamu. In fact, there was nothing Muslim-like about that school. In fact, the, the proprietor of that school happened to, talk, um, happened to be uh, an Anglican strong church member. So there wasn't anything Muslim-like about that school. But for, it was from there, I started following them to Methodist uh, Methodist churches. Okay. Halfway, I, I mean, I finished my secondary education in my place, Owo. Then when I got to Owo now, I started going to uh, Anglican, Anglican churches. Until I finished my secondary school. And when I finished my secondary school now, I, uh, I turned out to be staying with my brother. Then my brother, one of my brother's wives took me to Seraphim and Cherubim uh, Church, I became a member. And the, so also, through one of my brother's friends, I became a member of Celestia. Okay. Mark you, my name is Anthony. Anthony is a Catholic uh, name. So I started with Catholic churches because um, one of my uncles, that is from my mother's side, happened to be a Catholic priest. He was the one who gave me that name, Anthony. In fact, there was virtually no particular denomination in that religion that I never went through. Okay. And then, then rooming and rooming about just like that. Searching for what, you may ask me. Yeah. Okay. I was searching for the truth. Okay. So that is more or less my religious encounter. Okay. Um, I, I, st I still have more questions on yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, but before we really go to uh, through that, there is another area you mentioned earlier on. Yes. And um, I, just as this, your personal encounter with moving, meeting people and interacting with them, mm. and also influencing your thinking and your perception mm. of who God is. Uh, during your military career, mm -hmm. you had the opportunity of traveling far and wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the places you mentioned mm. uh, is this Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, I believe Pakistan is a predominantly Muslim a country mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe influences to is two sides way mm -hmm. you could be influenced mm -hmm. here and there mm -hmm. and when you were in this environment mm -hmm. Pakistan mm -hmm. was there any remarkable uh, impact mm -hmm. that this community the, this Pakistan mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. had on you mm -hmm. especially um, with this your quest for okay, okay. for God. Um, well, yes, of course. But before I go into that, yeah. you know, I told you, there was virtually no particular denomination, denomination. that Christianity I never went through. Searching for, you, you want, might have asked me, what's, what was I searching for? Yeah, and why, 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 did why was that good of you? Okay. You see, there were lots of things they were giving us when I was a Christian that I couldn't just buy. Like, because I like didn't what? see like good of you. Things like, you know, in churches, um, during the, the prayer, 
there is a particular prayer tagged the Lord's Prayer, which says, Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth, and so on and so on. Until that part, the particular area there that says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I kept on, you know, probing. Could this statement be true? Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Because lead us not into temptation. I, even today, I can't even, uh, I can't even imagine how many temptations have passed through. Am I so devilish that since I was born and I was, since I knew my way to the church, I've been saying this prayer, and yet God never had, uh, uh, had, me, had my prayer for once. Then they keep on bothering me until God answered me one day and gave me the correct statement. The correct statement is, lead us in temptation. That's why the next statement follows, and deliver us from evil. You know, you can't run away from temptation. It's in need you get matured. But evil God leads will never go astray. So that is why it is, lead us in temptation. It's just like you, you say you want to be a graduate and you don't know, you don't want to go to university. Then how can And don't want to subject yourself to test there. Then how can you? So that is why the next statement follows and deliver us from evil. So things like that. Okay. And things like uh, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Um, uh, Jesus Christ uh, came and died for us and his blood washed away our sin. Could this be true? How could, how, how could he come and carry my sin? Because that is not in conformity with what this gentleman taught me. Because he taught me that, look, Tony, whatever you sow, that you will reap. He didn't tell me that. Whatever Jesus Christ sow, Tony will, see, will reap it, vice versa. Then why should I expect the man to come and carry my sin? Is he in conformity with his teaching? Do you see to that? Okay, coupled with the fact that you know, on Easter Day, uh, which is called Good, Good, Good Friday. That, that, that period, you see us drinking, eating, and all the rest of it. And they call it Good Friday. Then I ask the pastors, what is good about this day, this particular Friday? We say we love this man. We are followers of this man. And you grab this man. You killed him. You loaded his shoulder with, uh, with uh, the weight of, his, uh, of the cross. You made the uh, crowns from weed and thorns, and you forced it into his head, and he tore his skin. You stretch his hand on the on the on the wood. You pop, uh, uh, push uh, nails through and the legs, and you nail him to the cross, and you say, "It's Good Friday." What is good about this Friday? That means that all the other Fridays are bad Fridays. Can you imagine how the, the uh, Chetan is turning the whole world upside down? Oh. May God forgive anybody who believes in that. Okay. You see, these are the types of things that kept on bothering my mind. And nobody could give me convincing answer to this. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you very much. Um, I would like to pause you here. We would like to go on a break. And uh, when we come back, uh, uh, Colonel Anthony uh, Adegbayo Joma will continue with us. Thank you. When you find that special someone Feel your whole life has barely begun You can walk on the moon Shout it to everyone Allah knows Allah knows When you gaze with love in your eyes Catch a glimpse of paradise And you see your child take the first breath of love Allah knows Welcome back to this exclusive interview with uh, uh, Colonel Anthony Adigbayo Ochoma. And uh, he has been our guest and uh, we have been benefited so along. So, and I believe you to learn one or two things. Um, Colonel, sir, uh, before we sign out for break, you are giving us expository into why you are searching around. Yeah and certain questions that were bothering your minds yeah. which you couldn't really find the yeah. answer to. Um, I would like to, to carry on with that. Mm -hmm. And 
we see how you were able to wriggle out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me talk the issue of what they were giving me in churches. That is, um, Jesus Christ um, dying for us and his blood wiping away our sin. Look, I believe that God is perfect and he's the only one that is perfect. And I'm sure you believe in that too. Then what is perfection? Perfection is a respecter of nobody. What is done to, to A, it, it, as long as A and B commit the same, it must be done to. Okay. If it's done to the ch child of a beggar, it should also be, the same punishment should be also be meted to the son of a president. That is perfection. Perfection does not entertain injustice. God warned me through one of the ten, ten commandments is sent to me through Moses, that thou shalt not kill. And he's the God that I believe that is perfect. And he warned me not to kill. And it's the same God now that will turn around and give me his only begotten son, as according to you, his only begotten son to go and kill for my sin. Then if God should behave like that, where is the perfection? Where is the perfection? They make me believe as if that was the mission of Jesus Christ on earth. But whereas his mission is clearly stated in the Bible, for God, John 16 or something, for God loves the world so much so, that he gave his only begotten son, that he whosoever believeth in him shall never perish. He didn't say whosoever killed him. Mark you. He said he whosoever believeth in him. Now you grab this man and you kill him. He said he was meant to come and be slaughtered like a ram. If what you are teaching us was anything to reckon with, when you nailed this gentleman to the cross, it was there shedding blood, then that blood should have wiped away sins or not. And why do we still have his sins or not today? In fact, the sins or not today are even, are even much more than it used to be in the days of Jesus Christ. So if what we are giving us was anything to, to, to reckon with, this man should be happy under that condition that his, uh, his mission was fulfilled on earth. That he was meant to come and die for them and he's dying for them. Okay? And his blood will wipe away their sin. But what does this judgment say under that con uh, terrible condition on that cross? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Meaning what? They are jubilating killing or committing terrible murder and yet jubilating that he was meant to come and die for them and the blood that washed away their sin. We should, do, should have been crying for committing terrible murder. Okay. So these are where the types of things that, that I couldn't just comprehend. It was just too much for me to understand. And I kept asking questions. Who will give me any convincing answer? Nobody. That was why you did, told me. Did, did you did you take some of these uh, questions to to the experts? Uh, so. Who are the so-called experts? They are the pastors. They are the reverends. They are the priests. So they are the people I took my questions to. So when this the, the, the denomination was unable to satisfy me, you see me, I will change it to another one. No satisfaction there, I will change to another one. Just like that. That is the cause of my more or less ruling. Yeah, you know, like a rolling stone that gathers no more. Okay, let me now take you back to my earlier question on yeah. Pakistan yeah. journey. Yeah. Uh, any particular incidents mm -hmm. that you can refer to that you may say also contributed to uh, this, your quest yeah. for yeah. the one and only true God? Yeah. I told you I went to Pakistan. Uh, I, I was sent to Pakistan in 1976. There was this particular day, excuse me, I can't, I can't say exactly now what took me out, what was I looking for, and what eventually brought me to one particular bookshop. I went out with my wife though. So we entered that bookshop. So my wife, I think she was looking for baby things or so. So I went, I saw a collection of books. So. The next thing I saw, I picked one particular one. I opened it to my surprise. I saw that uh, 
um, uh, the contents were written in Arabic and English uh, uh, in, uh, inscriptions. So then I asked the bookseller, ah, what sort of book is this? He said it's Quran. Quran? He said yes. Ah, Quran in English uh, version? He said yes. Because before then, I never believed that Quran was ever written in any other language apart from Arabic language. Okay? So then I decided to buy it. Quran wasn't written on any this in fact, this is the book. See the front, the back. No, no, how will you know that is Quran? Okay. So I bought it for two reasons. I've been longing to know more about Muslim religion. When I told you I was asking for I was asking these questions, this question, and the only religions that I would call religions that were really exposed to were Christians, uh, Christianity, and this Muslim religion. The Ogun worshipping, well, in fact, don't even talk that one because it won't give me any answer. Okay. So I said, okay, let me try this other religion. Maybe I will find this answer to these my questions. Okay. Uh, that was one of the reasons why I bought it because I was told that even that religion is a religion of peace as of that time. Coupled with the fact that the country in which uh, well, I was their visitor was purely an Islamic system of government. So if you happen to be a non-Muslim, no, 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 uh, you won't get on fine there. And unfortunately, one of my lecturers, very nice and very good man, but he happened to be a Christian, so they were all the while suppressing him. Okay. Since they said this religion is a religion of peace, then why this, why did, why, 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 why the suppression? So that raises your curiosity. To do and that was why I decided to buy this book to go and examine. To find out what actually is Exactly. So I got this book now. I went to. I opened the book. The book started with introduction. So introduction like that. So at the end of the introduction, I jump into the last chapter of the book, which I didn't know. I thought that was supposed to be the first chapter. So ah, it did not blend. I tried, tried it several times. It didn't flow. Ah, in fact, that was how, why I abandoned uh, this, this Quran since 1976. And I left it there. So my inquisitiveness could not be satisfied then I could not go any further. So you had difficulty in reading it. In reading it. And that was how I left it. Okay. Um, let's let now come back home. Uh, when you come back from uh, Pakistan, yeah. and you come to Nigeria, let's now take Nigeria context. Uh, this, your search for this one and only true God, yeah. did it die down or... How did you go from that level? Very good question. You know, I told you, I'm a prince. Yeah. Um, my immediate senior brother, the same mother and father, was then the one on the throne, as a Jomo. Okay. So I was very close to him. So he passed away uh, in the year 2003. So after his burial, I uh, went to the church for Thanksgiving. So one of his wives met me there. In fact, I, I, I can't tell you now what entered her head that made her to send me an holy Bible. New one. Okay. So I collected the holy Bible from her and took it to my house in Mina. And I dropped it on my table there. So that was how that Holy Bible was. But unfortunately, that was the period my business was not going on fine because uh, we just moved from uh, civilian, I mean, military system of government to Civil. what you call the democracy. And so, so and uh, this uh, the due process, and so I couldn't understand this. So, so I was uh, piling up debt upon debt. So then I decided to sit, uh, sit at home because many governments were owing me and I could not recover the money. So I decided to sit up to him. So that was what gave me that time now to go and examine uh, this, this Holy Bible. Bible. So I picked uh, that, uh, that uh, Holy Bible, and I opened it. 
you know, it, it's a unique one, unique in the sense that it's a studied Bible. Um, when you open it, um, you know, the first thing you go through is the chronology of that particular chapter, uh, which uh, what I did as so That promoted my interest. Then I started reading. Okay. So this was the way I started reading. And uh, <laughs> a lot of things started surfacing. You discover some Many some things. things. Many things that uh, if... Uh, uh, I'm coming. When you say you started reading, mm -hmm. Does that mean that you have not been reading Bible? Yeah, you, you, you. More, I can say you are more or less born in Christianity. Good. But Good. Since that period up to Good. that 2000 or 2000 Good. something, you, you've not been reading Bible. Good. Just when you are given this one, Good. and you are, you are idle, you have nothing doing, then Good. you pick it up. Good. You see, reading Bible is quite different from studying Bible. To reading Bible. Even in my school sat, I offer their religious knowledge. But what do they uh, what 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 did we offer? It was one of the disciples and the uh, Acts of Apostles. Those are the only two areas that we cover. And I have my distinction as if I were an authority in deciphering the contents of the Holy Bible. This is my first time of reading Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from the beginning to the end. I never read Bible from the beginning to the end before. Yes, we used to go to churches. The, during the pastor's sermons, he would refer you to many chapters and so on. But not, it's whatever you, we, we, we gave you that, that you would really take up, up me up. So I've never read Bible from Genesis to Revelation until this particular time. So it was from there. If not because of my reading the Bible, I never believed that things like Sharia were it's things like Sharia exist in Bible. So I started discovering a lot of things like that. Okay? You know, when you open the Bible, it starts with Genesis. Genesis to Exodus. Exodus to, um, to what? Is in uh, um, um, Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus to Number. Number to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy to Joshua. Joshua to Judges, and so on. So when I got to Leviticus now, I was surprised. Many things... Many things, like what I told you, that uh, they were teaching us in, the, in churches, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. It was when I came to Matthew 4.10. Then I got the answer. They said, this man is our Lord and Savior. This is the same man talking here. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Then Satan approached him and, te and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 you know, tested him and asked him that if you could bow down for him, you would give him the whole world. But what did Jesus Christ say? He said, it is written, thou shalt worship your God and he only shall thou serve. Is Jesus Christ talking here. Then why do you have to be giving him a, a different version in the church? that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And this is the, the same gentleman telling me here that it's only God I should serve. In the same Matthew, the same chapter, 7, 21 to 23, the same Jesus Christ talking here. He said, not all those who call me master, 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 will see the kingdom of my father, except those who do the will of my father. He went further. He said, on that day, it was referring to the day of judgment. Many of you will see me and you will say, ah, we perform this miracle with your names. We heal this one with your names. We do the what did Jesus Christ say? He said, we turn at them and tell them, get off my back, you evil doers. Is Jesus Christ talking here? There are two things I want you to take note in that last statement. The first one he said, the will of my father. That is the will of God. What is the will of God? How much of this will do they understand? When they have done their own, they couldn't go there any further. They said they will, uh, the, the will of uh, the God's will be, be, be done. What is the will of God? Whereas the will of God is the manifestation of his laws. And those are the laws given, sent to me by God through Moses. Thou shalt not tell false, uh, false statements. 
thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not uh, commit murder, and so on and so forth, and thou shalt not have any other God apart from me. It's God talking here. That is the will of God. And that was what Jesus Christ was referring to. And why are you saying Jesus Christ? Even went further and said that he would tell them to get off his back. The evil to us. He, was, he would not be ready to save any evil to us. Why are those people by performing miracles? You and me, we haven't got that spiritual strength with which to perform miracles. The people claiming they perform miracles are they not the pastors, the reverends, and so on? Who are they, they, are, they are there misleading the whole people? Oh, may God forgive them. You can imagine the number of people these people have misled and are still misleading and they are going to, to uh, may God forgive them. May God open their eyes on time. I'm using this opportunity to warn them, to desist from it. Because that day, even me, myself, I will be caused to come and testify against them. Because of what this is my statement. So that is it. Okay, um, before, before I, I may say, before we digress out of this, uh, you said when you were reading the Bible, mm -hmm. you came across a section mm -hmm. that talked about uh, Sharia. Mm -hmm. um, can you kindly expatiate on that? Good of you. What, what, what actually interests you about that? Good of you. You know, I never knew there was Sharia uh, portion in the Holy Bible until that day. Coincidentally, that was the period that the Christian Association of Nigeria was kicking against the uh, um, legal establishment of Sharia system in Samfara State. Right? Okay. So I was surprised to come across Sharia in the Bible. Ah, then I asked my question. I asked myself, why are these people kicking against this establishment of a, a Sharia legal system of government in Sanfara State when we have a Sharia uh, section in, in the Bible? Okay. Thank you very much. Let, let's have a break now. Um, uh, audience would like to go on a break, and when we come back, we'd like to have a full explanation or gist on uh, Colonel Antonio Ojoma's uh, discovery uh, regarding the question on the Sharia in the Bible and how that also contributed to his discovering the one and only true God. Thank you for being with us. Mm. When you find that special someone, feel your whole life has barely begun. You can walk on the moon, shout it to everyone. Allah. You are welcome to this uh, important uh, exclusive interview with our special guest, and that is Colonel Anthony Adigbayi Ojomo. Uh, we have been with him, and he has been with us, sharing with us his personal experience and discoveries on this important topic on how he discovered the one and only true God. Before we went on break, he started explaining to us his um, discovery in the Bible concerning the concept of Sharia, and I would like him to carry on with that. Sir, I would like you to give us more explanation on that, okay. uh, what actually did you encounter Good. concerning Sharia in the Bible, vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the Quran. Good affair. Um, then I was surprised to see Sharia in the Bible. Then I kept on uh, wondering, could it be that uh, the Quranic sh Sharia happened to be tougher than th th this one I'm the reading in the Bible? And that's why they and were okay, against oh, it. That was good of you. So I was trying to find out the reason for that. In fact, it was even a violent uh, reaction from that uh, Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria. So I now 
went to the house to look for that, my Quran of 1976. I couldn't get, the, I couldn't lay my hand on it then. I said, no, uh, getting this one, now reading that one, will make me stop reading this uh, Holy Bible and I will not, be, uh, you know, I won't uh, be able to say all funny things that I'm discovering. So I will go back to that, I will go and look for that uh, Quran. Quran after the complete uh, reading of uh, the Holy Bible. Bible. So it was one day now, many other things started surfacing. Like uh, the way, you know, the way the Muslims, the way they pray, the mom is at the front, right? Um, the congregation will be behind him. And uh, the man recites uh, what you call Fatia. Okay. At the end of the Fatia, what does the congregation say? Amen. Amen. Good of you. And after the Amen, then uh, the man goes, they go into Ruku. Prostrate. Then after the Ruku, they, they go into prostration. That is the way it is exactly described in the Bible. Nehemiah 8, 4. Then why are we Christians not behaving like that? I kept on wondering. Why are we not behaving like that? Why are we not worshipping like that? When this is in the Bible. Do you get it now? Okay. That just like that. Okay. So I found it difficult to really understand all this. And the same place too in uh, John, 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Chapter 4. Uh, it is tagged. Test for true, true prophet. Test for true spirit. Meaning, when the day of judgment is approaching, many false prophets, many uh, prophets will start springing up. How do you know the true prophets? Then he says, the true prophet is he who acknowledges Jesus Christ. Okay. So if that prophet does not acknowledge Jesus Christ, it's then it's a, a false it's a prophet. False prophet. Okay. So then I say, oh, no wonder that... Uh, they have been telling us in the in churches that the Muslims do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. So that means that that religion it's is not false. true. Okay. Not until I eventually went to Quran. I will come back. I will come to that one. These are all the type of things that I keep on, you know, seeing and reading. I find it difficult to believe. If I have to compare what I used to listen to in churches with what I'm now discovering, it's unbelievable. So this is the issue. Okay. So let's go back to the Quran now. Um, you, you, you have read the Bible to the end now. Yeah. According to your exploration. Yes. Uh, you, you were looking for this Quran. Yeah. Why well, you later found it? Oh, yes. I, I, I later, I, I found it. You found no, the Quran. I, good. I found the Quran. And you, you, did that raise your curiosity again? Good of go you. Yes. Of even more now. Okay. okay. So because I want to compare these two holy books vis-a-vis -vis the contents. So then I now open the Quran. The problem I encountered in, in 1976 encounter surfaced it's again. To the end Good of you. Now that now made me to go to IET, Islamic Education Trust in, the, in MENA, to seek for their advice, guidance. So then they now corrected me that uh, the conventional books are normally read from uh, left to right. But Quran is read from right to left. Oh, so when I got to him, I applied it, and uh, the thing started flowing. And it was then I started seeing another discovery. So first, they said the Muslims do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. Just then from I the found test of prophet which you read from the test of prophet you read yes acknowledgement of jesus christ yeah in quran now yeah. then the first thing i just noticed i i i came across uh, the name of jesus christ in quran in fact i took my time to find out how many times it uh, it, uh, it appeared there 25 times isa isa is the arabic word for jesus ha <laughs> isa uh, the name of jesus christ in quran this is contrary to what i used to hear in the churches and I now came across another uh, verse there that said, um, any Muslim that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is not a true Muslim. What? I couldn't just believe this. Okay. On and on. And this was what I kept on 
discovering in the uh, and moreover the simplicity of the book itself the bible took me almost about nine to ten months to complete from genesis to revelation but this one did not take me more than seven weeks and that was why when i finished it i didn't believe that at uh, finished reading the Quran, book. for the fact that uh, Quran is not even written on this. So that now made me to go to Central Mosque in Mina to go and buy another book on which a uh, Quran is written on, you can see, uh, of the Holy Quran. So I came home because I thought a uh, Quran, uh, since uh, being an holy book, mm -hmm. is just like a uh, holy Bible divided into two sections. So I was all the while seeing Surah. Sura, Sura. So, I didn't see any portion there or section there, uh, you oh, know, for Quran. Quran. That made me to go and buy and one know. now with a Quran written. Then I bought it. I came home. Uh, the same thing. I couldn't find it anywhere bearing Quran. So I went back to the same IET for another help. So I then they, had, they saw me. They laughed. Uh, I said. This is not a laughing matter. They say, yes, they could see a little degree of, uh, 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 of ignorance. Uh, so what is it? They say, well, surah that I've been seeing is an Arabic word meaning chapter. Okay? And then what are you saying? That means that I've finished reading Quran. I said, but I've read it two times. They say, you have finished reading Quran two times. You don't mean it. Is it as simple as that? It was from there. I started you know, accepting this Quran. Why? My principle, if I'm embarking on any project, you see, not that God is simple. God himself is simplicity. So if I don't see that simplicity in that, uh, in that project, it means that the hands of God are not in that project. I put my car in reverse gear and go back. So it was from there. I started thinking of accepting this, uh, this Quran. Okay, then, um, okay, I told you about the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, now it was from there. Now I discovered the meaning of test for true prophets, okay. which they were teaching us in churches. Test for true prophets. That is, he who does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is a false prophet. Since the Muslims do not acknowledge Jesus Christ, then that means that. Uh, prophet Muhammad Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a false prophet. What? Then I didn't know where to go from here. Was I really discovering things with my eyes or I was imagining? And I took my time to reread and to study these two books. Okay. And that was how it went on and on. Okay. So, from there now, it's inside the book now, uh, uh, the uh, Holy Bible, that I came across, even the mentioning of the coming of Prophet Muhammad, which Jesus Christ talked about. Do you get me now? Okay. So, please, um, it was mentioned in many, many chapters, the Trilogy and so on. I will, you will please help me read um, uh, John. John chapter 16, verses uh, 12 to 15. Please. John 16, 12 to 16. To 15. To 15. I have much more to say to you. Good. More than you can now bear. Good. But when he, Good. the spirit of truth, comes, yeah. he will guide you into all truth. Mm. He will not speak on his own. Good. He will speak only what he hears. Good. And he will tell you what is here to come. Good. He will bring glory to me mm -hmm. by taking from what is mine mm -hmm. and making it known to you. Just stop there. Okay. We bring glory to you by taking from what is mine. mine. Let me start from there. When you go around, you go to the town, you have a group of people saying, Salam Aleikum, Salam Aleikum. What I sort of group of people say so? They are Muslims. Good of you. I even said it at the beginning of the program. Good of you. Then what is Salam Aleikum? Peace Salam be unto you. Be good of you. Peace be unto you. When Jesus Christ was on earth, anywhere he went to, the first thing he would ever say, is, peace be unto you here. Because that is the salutation in paradise. And that is from there. Then who teaches you, who teaches you Salam Aleikum? 
Is it not Prophet Muhammad? Okay. Is it not a, that part of it? Okay. Secondly, if you open this Quran, you will hardly find, you will never find even a chapter, even a verse. I mean, you know, bear, it be being used for first person singular number referring to the prophet. For all you will be seeing there is cool, cool, cool. You will never see anything in this uh, uh, Quran being said directly by the prophet. Cool, cool, meaning what? Meaning say, say, say. What does that mean? That's a command. That's a command. Okay. That is what we hear. Is that not the man that the Bible was referring to? The same thing, if you read Psalm 118, is the same man that this is being referred to. Uh, the, 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 the same man that that, 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 uh, that verse is referring to. Okay. Moreover, if you carry this uh, Bible, you find out that it mentions, what did he mention there? He said, the counselor. Another Bible, we, that is the, the spirit that another one we, that is the messenger that's coming. Another one we, we call it the Holy Spirit. Another one we call it the truth. Depending on the translator, translating the Hebrew language to English language. And that is what it calls him. But when you go to the Hebrew original the, uh, 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 version, the word being used by Jesus Christ is pakoleta. Pakoleta. P A R Q A L W E T A. Pakoleta. What does it mean? Many words. He who praises God more than the others. If you go back to Arabic dictionary, what is the meaning of Muhammad? The same. The same. Okay. So, lastly, to prove to you that this mm. is the man, they are, so lastly, please help me open the same Bible you are carrying there. Mm. Go to Matthew 21. Matthew 21, 33 to 44. Okay. There is, read it. The parable of the tenants. Good of you, the parable of the tenants. Yes, is Jesus to, Christ talking here? Yeah. Listen to another parable. Good. There was a landowner who had who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented a vineyard to some farmers. Good. And went away on a journey. Good. When the harvest time approached, mm -hmm. he sent his servant mm -hmm. to the tenant to collect his fruit. The tenant seized his servant. They beat one, killed another, mm -hmm. and stoned a third. Mm -hmm. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And the tenant treated them the same way. Mm -hmm. Last of all, he sent his son to them. Mm -hmm. They will respect my son, mm -hmm. he said. Mm -hmm. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the hair. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. Good. So they killed him Good. and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Good. Therefore, Good. when the owner of the vineyard comes, yeah. what will he do to those tenants? Good. He will bring those... No, it's all right there. Okay. When the owner of, of the, the vineyard tenant, comes... What, what will he do to them? What Jesus Christ... Is a, the, 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 that parable, what it's referring to is the case of Abraham. Abraham, Abraham is the best friend of, of God. So, God promised Abraham that all the prophets will come from his progeny. So, and Abraham had two, two sons. Ishmael, who happened to be the senior one, then Isaac. Right? Uh, Ishmael was given to him by the slave girl, Agar. So, the legal wife uh, gave to him Isaac. Okay. So, it was from Isaac line that the prophets were all the white coming that is God sending the prophets to them all the uh, uh, prophets like uh, Mo, uh, Mo, Moses and all the uh, Aaron and all the rest of it okay down to Jesus Christ but the Israelites will never listen they were still doing the same wrong thing and so on so God became annoyed and changed the button from the Isaac line now to Ishmael line so now that is from the uh, now to the Arab, I mean to the uh, to the, uh, the, 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 the Ishmael line, line who Arab are line. the Arabs, the Jews, who are well educated, educated and learned, they believe it, they believe in him, 
They know that it is true. But out of jealousy, they refuse to because they are annoying for the change of batting from them to the Ismail, Ismail line. Okay. Otherwise, this is the, okay, and Muhammad is from the Ishmael line. That is what, that, that is the, the, the parable of the tenant that Jesus Christ is referring to there. So, I mean, I have many, many evidence right inside the Bible there to confirm that what the Bible have been referring to was the coming of Prophet Muhammad, Shal Ali Ali Wa Salam. Okay, do you get it now? So that is it. Interesting. Um, you, uh, l l let me make a ride out of this. What does this uh, mean to you on the acceptance of uh, Prophet Muhammad? Uh, you have made reference to the Bible and you made reference to the Quran. Yeah. But even when you read the Quran, yes. you get the point. Yes. Uh, you, you made mention of the Prophet being commanded to read the Quran, yes. which also you justify from the Quran. Yes. What do you make out of this uh, upon the acceptance of Prophet Muhammad from what you have been told earlier on? Yes. This is a true prophet sent by God. And that is why I'm accepting every word that I see in the I mean, in Quran because they are not his words. They are words from God through Angel Gabriel. Okay. Okay. So let me now ask you another important question. Yeah. We have been talking all along mm. and you have really exposed us to a lot of what you personally discovered yeah. and uh, this. Yeah. What summary do you want to give us? Um, in, in you two, see, because I've, I, I, I've, for I've, example, like myself now, yeah. uh, um, I, as a Muslim, yes. you get the point, and uh, somebody who has not been exposed to the other side. Okay. Now, you have exposed me to the two now, okay. so to say. Okay. Kind of what, what, do you, what, do you, what uh, summary do Good. you want to really give? I've examined these two books yes. and I've studied these two books. Yes. You can see that I'm, on, I'm referring to the context from these two books. Yes. I'm not talking things out of my own making. I mean, the, 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 these two books, uh, the, oh sorry, uh, the, 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 it, these two books, Quran and, uh, and the Bible, that are talking. Okay. So from my examination of the two books, these are these, the two religions. I come to realize that the Christians, they have strong religion, but unfortunately, they don't have that true God that I found. And the Muslims, they have that true God that I found, but they don't have strong religion. This is another, this another um, big word, and um, time, unfortunately, time, time is against us. Uh, but uh, next time we meet, Inshallah. I will want us to really uh, look into that again. Uh, Christians have uh, strong they religion. They have strong religion, but, but they, they don't, don't have, have that true God, God that have our God. Why Muslims have... They have that true, true God that I'm God. referring to that I've but found, they have but they don't have strong, strong religion. religion. So we'll, we'll pray God we spare our lives Amen. to come to really see the true explanation of this particular assertion. grace of God. Uh, audience, we thank God Almighty for leading us all this way. And um, we have really shared with his experience, uh, just as I said earlier on, his personal perspective 